What can the U.S. do to prevent these indiscriminate killings today? Secretary of State Hillary Clinton proposed sending $25 million in non-lethal aid to the rebels, radios, body armor, vehicles. Is this mission creep, and is it something we should be doing? In fact, should we be doing more? Former NATO Supreme Allied Commander and CNN contributor General Wesley Clark joins me now from Los Angeles. General Clark, thanks so much for being with us tonight. Thank you, Elliot. First, I guess I just have to ask, how do you assess the military situation? You have enormous experience with this. You've overseen combat. You have won the battles you've waged. Can the opposition forces in Misrata survive based upon what you know that's going on right now? Uh, I think they can. I think that uh, there'll be more support coming into them from uh, Italy, France, UK. Maybe some of that non-lethal equipment from the United States will be coming in to help them as well. They do have the seaport there. They, I think they will survive. Remember, they're fighting uh, essentially a group of mercenaries under Gaddafi's aim uh, that's equipped with heavy weaponry, maybe superior weaponry, but, uh, but they don't have the city, and they haven't been able to take it uh, to date. So I think they've got a good chance of holding on in Misrata. You, you are a bit oblique, and you're a very diplomatic sort, but I want to push you a little bit for the benefit of our viewers. When you say they'll be getting more assistance, what, what type of assistance do you think they're going to be getting? Are you envisioning that some of the NATO countries, France in particular, has a bit more, been a bit more bellicose than, than President Sarkozy, certainly, than, than other leaders? Will they send troops in if it appears that Misrata is about to fall to Gaddafi? I wouldn't be surprised to see some advisor teams go in there from these countries. That's certainly uh, permitted under the UN Security Council resolution. And I think what uh, Muammar Gaddafi probably doesn't understand is he, he really doesn't understand that the leaders of France, UK, Italy, the United States, NATO, they're not going to allow him to survive. So uh, it may look like his uh, forces are superior at some point, but uh, Qaddafi's lifeline will be choked off. The rebels will be strengthened politically, economically, and militarily. NATO will maintain an ironclad grip on the skies above, and, and Qaddafi has to go. That's the policy goal, and, uh, and he will go. Look, you, you are exactly right. The political imperative behind ensuring that Gaddafi is gone within some reasonably short time frame is overwhelming. On the other hand, the military tableau that we see playing out here has not been so encouraging recently. And, and you know, you, I have to give you enormous credit. You were very prescient several weeks ago when this began. You said that, and I don't want to call it mission creep. I think you rightly say that's not really what this is. The mission's always been the same. But the creeping escalation of our military engagement has been visible just as you predicted. Where will this take us? Now we're sending so-called non-lethal aid. There'll be advisors. This is what you foresaw. What, what happens from here on in? Well, the president's always been very candid, for the United States at least. What, what he said is that the purpose of the U.S. military involvement was to protect civilians, but he had a policy goal that went beyond the military mission. And, uh, and I think that's exactly what you're seeing play out here. Now, the, to reach that policy goal, you can provide non-lethal aid. You can provide um, assistance in the rebel uh, governing areas so they can get better governance. You can provide hospital support. And uh, allies can certainly do more than that as they're preparing to do. I think all of that will be ratcheted up against Gaddafi. Gaddafi's going to try to stall for time. He's going to believe he can get uh, extra mercenaries to come in there. He's going to try to bribe and threaten and coerce the rebel groups, but uh, all of this is going to fail because he's up against overwhelming power. He just doesn't see it yet. I think the question is one of time frame. It certainly is the case that the power arrayed against him is overwhelming, but until now, as I think we're seeing in, in the fight in Misrata, in the fight outside Benghazi, so far militarily he's been able to hold his own. Even if we're sending, I mean, I saw the, the, the list of what's included in the $25 million of non-lethal aid, binoculars, body armor, some trucks, all of that is, is fine, but if they don't have the troops to get into the field to use that stuff, what good is it? So don't they just need more troops and firepower in the field ultimately to, to, to get this over the finish line? Well, they'll get the troops, and um, other countries probably will provide them with the firepower. I think some of that's already coming in. And it's a matter of getting the organization, the training right, um, taking small steps and trying to, instead of trying to take the whole country all at once. And it would not surprise me to see that these uh, trainers on the ground from our allies also can, com can communicate with the aircraft overhead. I think that's inevitable. Uh, that's going to happen. It's, they're going to do whatever it takes to be effective against Gaddafi, and, uh, and he's going to go. 
So we're watching the policy unfold. I think the United States has been very adroit thus far in avoiding mission creep with the military action of the United mm -hmm. States. So uh, it, it's up to the other elements of power then to apply the pressure and force Gaddafi out. All right, General Clark, as always, thank you for your wisdom on this. Your counseling patience, something most of us are not terribly good at. Thanks so much for com coming on the show. Sure.